Welcome to All About Hopkinton, the HCAM original program highlighting the people and organizations that make Hopkinton a great place to live. I'm Mary Arnott, your host. Today we have with us Hopkinton Middle School Principal Alan Keller. Welcome, Alan. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me, Mary. I appreciate being here. Yeah, we've been wanting to get you on, so I was glad you were able to make time today to come on and talk with us. My pleasure. I thought maybe we'd start a little bit about uh, who you are, your background, how you came to Hopkinton, anything you'd like to share with us. Sure. I'm uh, originally from Pennsylvania. I um, came from a small town in western Pennsylvania, and mm -hmm. I I uh, went to school actually for journalism, so I went to West Virginia University um, for journalism and, and started working in, actually my first job was in sales, um, led me to pharmaceutical sales and uh, while um, that was somewhat successful, uh, some would argue maybe it wasn't that successful like my boss, but I, mm -hmm. I decided, I started to, um, as part of that, I started to look at what I really liked about um, what I was doing and what I really enjoyed doing was actually teaching doctors uh, as much as I possibly could uh, about um, so, you know the pharmaceuticals that we had at that, at that time. And so I had originally pursued when I was in college, I had originally pursued teaching, but then backed off of that um, um, at the advice of a, of a counselor, of a guidance counselor at school. And then, um, as I said, started kind of looking at, at that. I really liked being in front and talking to uh, the doctors and helping them make decisions uh, around uh, medications. And so then I decided to go back to school for teaching. So that was a, a difficult decision. Uh, ultimately, at this stage in my life and career, I'm happy that I made that. But at the time, uh, you know, my parents weren't too happy about the fact that I um, was in, you know, had, had finished college and was in a successful career and had decided to um, stop that and go back to school. But um, it helped me develop a perspective once I got my first teaching job. It uh, helped me develop that uh, perspective and a great appreciation for, for teaching. And I, and I had finally found what I really loved. And so um, I, at the time, to get my degree in teaching, I was at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, met my, well, it was my girlfriend at the time, uh, who eventually became my wife, and she's from Massachusetts, and um, she um, was pretty adamant that we had to live in, in Massachusetts. So I got my first teaching job in Foxborough, where I was teaching at a middle school. And I actually initially wanted to teach high school when I was entered my program. And the program I was in asked us uh, if you wanted to be secondary, so middle school, middle school or high school, they asked you to observe at both the middle school and high school. And I um, stumbled upon, I got assigned to a, a classroom that was in a middle school, um, was just a, a very gifted middle school teacher. And it was at that moment where um, the wheels started to turn a little bit. And I said, you know what, I, I could see myself as more of a middle school teacher because what I saw this teacher do for the 15 days that I was in the classroom was just was, was magical. And, and the energy, enthusiasm uh, that middle school students have when they're at that age, um, it needs to be harnessed. Uh, but it, was, uh, it really made me start to look at myself as, as an educator of uh, middle school students. And, so, um, so I wound up doing my year-long uh, teaching because at, at the program I was at at Pitt, it wasn't a student teaching. It was we were in the classroom for a, a full year and then took classes at night. And so I worked with a seventh-grade classroom, and then um, got my first opportunity once I graduated um, to teach in Foxborough. I taught at the middle school in Foxborough, um, and then I became an assistant principal there. And as assistant principal, I. Um, I liked what I was doing, but I had a desire to work more with curriculum and working more with uh, writing in particular was, was my passion. And I felt like I could bring something to, uh, to a school or to a district around improving writing skills. And um, a curriculum position became available in Hopkinton. And so that's where I started my career in Hopkinton. So for three years, I was a curriculum director. Um, and, and then at the end of that three years, uh, Dr. Bill Lynch, who was a principal at the time, had decided that uh, he was going to retire. And I put my name into, into the ring, and, and, and now this is my sixth year as, as principal of middle school. And so mm -hmm. I'm very happy and thrilled to be um, both in the community of Hopkinton as well as, middle, as principal of the Hopkinton Middle School. Well, I have to say, I think your enthusiasm for the school really shows. And it seems like, you know, just the way you talk about it, maybe it was a little different career path to get there. But it seems like you're really in the right place for yourself. That yeah, it, I appreciate that. Yeah, that comes through. Thank you. I, you know, it's, it's interesting because I um, just earlier today actually was talking to my first principal. Um, we had reconnected recently after having not talked for five years when I was when I was a teacher. So he, he was ultimately the principal that hired me. And um, he really 
at, at the time, uh, I, well, I realize now how much he inspired me and, and um, some of the things that he did that I emulate now as principal. But at the time, I remember saying I would never, ever would want to be principal. I would not want to have uh, that responsibility upon me. And it wasn't until being here in the community and, and getting to know the role a little bit better and seeing the kids, seeing the parents, seeing the teachers, um, that I said, I think I could do this. And um, I, hopefully I've, I've done an okay job to this point. Well, you know, I think it's interesting you said you started out in marketing because I find that marketing people can often go into different areas and be very successful at them because there's something about the fact that you have to have those good skills to interact with people you know, it, that it comes through. So I think, it, you know, it might have been a little different start, but I think that's good for you. Thank right? you. Yeah, yeah. It, definitely, it definitely taught me a lot in working with a diverse uh, uh, range of people and uh, perspectives, both mm -hmm. in terms of working with our students who are who fall all across the spectrums in terms of their interests and abilities, as, as well as uh, parents who have a variety of, of backgrounds. Mine was very different than, you know, than my wife's. And growing up in Western Pennsylvania was a very working class community. And so I feel like that has offered me a lot of, a lot of uh, opportunities to in interact and engage and know a little bit more about um, about an upbringing and you know mm -hmm. I, I see that now when in looking at myself as a parent so I have a son who's four and my wife and I um, it's easy to, prior to having a child it was easy to, to tell people how they should be doing or how they should be educating in the home you know and, and it's really brought a, a unique perspective to my life as well and, and uh, um, and thinking about how we, we raise our child, and, and uh, it's, it's helped me, I think, become a better principal. I, I thought I was a pretty good principal, uh, or a decent principal, mm -hmm. uh, without having a son, but I've, I've, I've uh, taken that a little bit, uh, I think I've become a little bit better in terms of having that perspective. Yes, having children does give you a very different <laughs> perspective on life. No question. <laughs> I agree with that. But I have to ask you, because I was doing a little looking into your background as well before the show today, and you've got educational experience from three different universities so during college football which team do you <laughs> root for <laughs> yeah well um, so my my friends uh, at, at both that I developed at both schools uh, challenged me uh, regularly but I well I grew up a Pitt fan so I grew uh -huh. up uh, um, rooting for I actually grew up in Penn State country it's really uh, there's a lot of a lot of the majority of the people in my community are Penn State fans mm -hmm. um, but I grew up as a Pitt fan and so then I went to West Virginia and there was certainly a rival rivalry between West Virginia and Pitt um, um, but I, even when I was at West Virginia, I was rooting for Pitt uh, and remain. I root for West Virginia, provided they're not playing Pitt. But, and I, I guess distance makes the heart grow fonder because I even uh, find myself occasionally rooting for Penn State, which I never did growing no. up. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for noticing that. Yeah. Rivalry. <laughs> I decided to ask. Yeah. <laughs> and I noticed you've got advanced studies from University of Massachusetts as well. So I thought, gee, I wonder which of those three teams. Yeah, yeah. I, never, I never really developed the connection to uh, Minivan, UMass huh? sports. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, you know the importance of education, obviously. So what are the, some of the things that you do at the middle school to create the environment so students get the most out of their education? Right. So um, we've had a couple things. I mean, since uh, one of, I mentioned my, my previous principal uh, when I was teaching, uh, one of the things that he did really well was engage the community, engage our students uh, in, in being part of the school. And uh, when I first got there, there wasn't uh, an after school culture there. Uh, mm -hmm. at my pre we're at the school of which I taught in Foxborough, and he worked really hard on that. So that's one of the things that I have strived to do and emulated from him. Um, we, um, in the past, I think, five years, we've added about 20 clubs um, to our offerings, and I, I feel as though we have a really strong breadth of um, clubs, um, and we always tell the students every single year, um, Assistant Principal Grady and Assistant Principal Ben Benick and I tell the students that if, uh, if, there's a, if there's something that you're interested in that we don't have as part of our clubs, let us know and we'll find a way to make it happen. And we've added a ping pong or table tennis club, depending on your perspective. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've added, um, we've, we're looking to add an outdoor club. We've added a variety of clubs um, throughout the year. So that's one of the things is trying, we've really tried to expand our, for lack of a better word, our footprint on after school once at dismissal. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also focused on academics, and so um, we've be, we've one of our initiatives has been around response to intervention. So, um, and really, what response to intervention is is it's a it's a pyramid which represents um, the how we address student needs. So at the bottom of the pyramid is what's called tier one, and that's what's offered to every kid. So mm -hmm. it's the curriculum, it's the essential curriculum that we offer every kid. So in a social studies classroom, in a math classroom, in a science classroom, here is what every child gets. And then tier two is designed for, as you go up the pyramid, it's designed for students who 
aren't fully understanding um, or aren't fully grasping the concepts in tier one. Or on the, uh, on the flip side of that, it's for students who already know those essential standards, those things that we say are important for every child to know. They already know it on day one. They knew it when, they, when you, you opened up the, the, the book or opened up the, to that first chapter. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do for those students? And so we've been working, we're now in our fourth year of uh, having an initiative around response intervention. So it's figuring out, uh, so every, right now every six days we have a, a period that we call Hiller Block. And it's for teachers to either uh, intervene with students who are struggling with the concept mm -hmm. or teachers to offer enrichment uh, for students who have some of these concepts. Uh, we're continuing to work on that. Um, our teachers tell us that, um, and I agree with them, that every six days to be able to do that is not quite enough. Mm -hmm. So we've been looking at our schedule and we've been working to try and develop or build a schedule that um, better meets those needs, but um, academically, that's that's uh, where a bulk of our of our focus has been, mm -hmm. is around meeting students' needs and differentiating instruction in the classroom. And as a school, um, we're, we've spent a lot of time this year um, around a Chromebook initiative. So we have a one-to-one. -one. Our students now, all our students in the middle school now have a, a laptop, a Chromebook that is, is the device that we've chosen. And we've spent a lot of our time uh, in professional development at the end of last year, during the summer, at the beginning of this year, and, and we're uh, approaching the halfway point of this year, around how can these devices um, improve in curriculum instruction and assessment. And we've been really, uh, tried to be really thoughtful, and I think we have succeeded to not just say, this is a device and it's really exciting because it's a device, but mm -hmm. we've tried to say, how is it going to change and improve what we do right. around curriculum yeah, instruction yeah. and assessment? Very good. Well, well, as you mentioned, um, in middle school, the kids have a lot of energy. Got to channel that energy. A lot of, when you talked about some after-school programs, um, I noticed they've done some fun things, uh, sort of with the school, but a little different, like the stuff that I see on YouTube in yes. the middle school. Yes. The things a little exciting and. A lot of fun. Yeah, yes, it is. So we had... Lip dub um, or something yes, they call yeah. it, yeah. So we had uh, one of our guidance counselors, uh, Bill Meehan, um, approached us uh, a couple years ago, or actually, I guess, four years ago at this point, uh, with an idea to have a lip dub. And then he showed an example of what a lip dub looks like. And now I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of commonplace. Um, but at the time, it was new to a lot of us. So. Uh, if you haven't seen it, we've now done two. We, we, our, our pattern is every other year, and I think that in year two, along with uh, the support of HCAM, we were really able to uh, up the ante. But we have we've done two, I think, outstanding efforts, and it, it's um, you know it's it's really neat when you look at it and you look at um, how exciting and how um, wrapped up into it everybody is. But with both of with both of the songs, we tried hard to make it more than just uh, a one-time event and try to talk to the, our students. Uh, about what what um, the message is uh, behind behind what we're doing. So in the mm -hmm. first one, um, you know, we we represented the different clubs and and uh, we we talked about belonging to something and we used the Lady Gaga song and we and so we talked about how it's important to recognize that you may be into something and, be, and even though it's different than what you're into. Um, that's okay, and it needs to be okay. And then, um, and then our most recent one with the Taylor Swift song was was a, a similar theme in terms of um, we're just going to be our own person and be and be mm -hmm. content with that. So it's fun and exciting, but there's also we're also hopeful that the message resonates uh, after they leave. I thought it was good messages in both. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. It seems like a lot of talent over at the middle school. There certainly it is. is. It's yes. very enjoyable. So for anyone who wants to go out and look at YouTube, just Query Hopkinton Middle School <laughs> lip dub, and they'll have a couple of minutes of rural enjoyment there. Absolutely, and then yeah. there's the bonus tracks as well, where we had, where the teachers had a little bit of fun afterwards mm -hmm. too, uh, where they've, they've done their own their own uh, uh, tradition yeah. piece to that. Well, turning to um, something that's a little bit more serious yes. but important, of course, is always school safety, and what's happening at Hopkinton Middle School in terms of school safety. Yeah, so this year, um, with, as with all schools, uh, we introduced the ALICE uh, uh, program, which, you know, responding to an intruder. And so uh, we, we um, spent a lot of time, well, so we spent a lot of time at the end of last year working with our staff. Uh, we also had a, a professional development afternoon working with our staff at the beginning of this year where we actually did a, a drill uh, with them with no students in the building. And then we also, then we debriefed afterwards and talked about what it was like to use this Alice method versus the traditional lockdown method that we have done in the past. And 
you know, resoundingly, the staff um, has said that they feel more empowered and that there's more options available to them uh, as a result of, of using Alice. So we then, um, Mrs. Ben Benek, Mrs. Grady, and I then met with uh, all students um, at the beginning of the year and went over all the steps involved in Alice and what's mm -hmm. entailed and the things that they need to think about. So we then uh, had an announced drill, uh, I believe it was in mid-October, um, in which we um, in which we got on the PA system and said here's what's happening and here's the scenario and we gave students a couple different scenarios and teachers were there taking notes about and then so you know the students and the teachers had the opportunity to respond to um, the scenario presented and then also an opportunity to debrief about what it felt like what are some of the thoughts ways that we can improve it mm -hmm. um, so then as a staff they brought those notes and we talked about some of the things that, um, that the classrooms brought to us and um, and then I've also have I have a, um, a crisis response team of adults that we that I meet with on a monthly basis and uh, this year I also began uh, a student crisis response team so we meet uh, on not quite on a monthly basis uh, it depends on on the student schedule but we meet on a regular basis and talk about some of the things that they're seeing and I also ask them to be leaders in the building to encourage their fellow students you know for instance uh, if somebody's at the, at the front door at any of the doors and is asking to, to be let in that um, that they say I'm sorry you need to come around to the front entrance and that an adult needs to let them into the building so those are some of the things that um, that we're working on around Alice and have been really successful I believe to this point um, we also um, are in the process uh, officer powers um, and I um, met with somebody from um, Safe Routes to Schools, which is a state mm -hmm. program um, that looks at um, how we can improve um, pedestrian and bike safety for students coming to school, um, but it also is looking to encourage um, students to do that. As, as you may know, um, several years ago we lost a student um, who was biking home from school. Yes, um, I do know, yeah. And, um, and so that's one of the things that we've been talking about for a while is how we can improve the safety. We also want to encourage students to do that and make it a, a fun opportunity to, for staff members and students to ride a bike to school, to walk to school. And so uh, we've had a first meeting and we ha we're uh, looking at different ways that we can launch this uh, in the spring to, um, uh, to begin that program. Good. And I know uh, something else that I saw on the website, there's so much good information on that website, we'll make sure we put it on at the end of the program, but uh, about uh, around bullying and what's being done to uh, educate students, parents, teachers, how to handle situations with bullying and what they can do to alert the school about bullying. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so we had, um, again, I'll refer back to um, one of our guidance counselors, Bill Meehan. So Bill Meehan and I, um, a couple years ago, applied to the Metro West Community Health Care Foundation. Uh, they've been a really generous organization, um, and, and um, also part of this organization, they um, have our students uh, every other year take a survey in grades six, seven, and eight. They take it at the high school as well mm -hmm. around uh, school climate. And so we get a lot of really valuable feedback from that survey. And they also happen to have a grant, I believe it was four years ago, um, that we were fortunate enough to be the beneficiary of a significant grant that uh, we were able to put some anti-bullying, um, an anti-bullying program in place. And so um, we've really tried to work with our students um, to lead some of that, um, some of those pieces around the school. We just this past Friday sent um, 10 students to a ULEAD conference, uh, which was in Newton, and um, Bill Meehan, the guidance counselor, took those 10 students, and then their charge is to come back and work with our students um, to develop some programs to continue some of the, the momentum and initiative that uh, happened at that conference. Uh, actually today, um, during what we call X block, which is a, uh, a period at the end of the day, it happens every six days, uh, a, a former high school student who's now at UMass, Ashley Olofsson, um, she's presenting to um, our eighth grade girls talking about um, body image and some of the things that, mm -hmm. that face um, girls at, at this age that uh, I think is a really powerful message. And we always look for opportunities for um, students to hear from other students, whether they be in high school or college. Mm -hmm. um, as much as I like to think 
we're important and what we have to say is great. Uh, I've, I've certainly learned through experience that it's a, a message is a lot more powerful when it comes from a peer or it comes from somebody at the high school or at the college level than coming from an adult who uh, is, is, in the, is in the school or, is, or thinks that they, what they have to say is really important. Mm -hmm. Well, all these things, good things that are going on, the academics, the after-school programs, the focus on safety, I mean, I think all of these things are what helps make Hopkinton now uh, among the top 10 communities in the state where people want to live and have their children educated. Uh, I think that's what's helping to spur some of our growth is the good schools and the programs that we have. But um, if you have, uh, do you have a wish list for Hopkinton Middle School? Are there things that you don't have yet that you'd like to see happen? or? Oh, that's a that's a good question. It's kind of an open-ended question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things. Um, you know, so I mean, you know, one of the things that um, you know, so I talked about technology and I talked mm -hmm. about the Chromebooks, and and that's a really exciting thing, and I think it's enhancing um, our our instruction, our curriculum, and our assessments. Um, but there's you know there's dangers that come with with technology as well, and, and there's things that we have to be careful with, and you know. Um, as an example, we started an Instagram account um, a couple of years ago, and it's really exciting because we can post pictures or we can post videos, and that's where students are. They're they're largely on Instagram, which is you know just posting pictures, and the kids have an opportunity to make a comment. We have an opportunity to make a comment on it. Um, and, but there's also there's you know there's opportunities for abuse to that. So sometimes you know whether it's some students writing something that you wish they wouldn't write, and we can easily take that off. But then there's also like you just just last week, some people had posted some created some fake Hopkinton Middle School accounts, and so it's having to be vigilant mm -hmm. about things like that uh, from an institutional standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, but of greater concern, and we can always address those. But of greater concern for us is is um, is our students. You know they're 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 young, obviously, and and. Um, we want to try and educate them as much as possible about the dangers of some of these things online and, and also uh, not just the dangers but also um, multitasking and, and I, you know, there's, there's a movie that that's, uh, was just recently released, it's a documentary called Screenagers um, mm -hmm. that I'm looking at potentially bringing in. So like, that's one of the things I'd say what would be on my wish list is to, to kind of to foster a, a conversation about um, we have this wonderful technology and most of the kids you see in the middle school are walking around with a phone. I'm walking around with a phone um, and, and, and trying to be responsible about it um, to appreciate the, the, the power that it has but also to be able to put it down and, and um, you know, so that's, I guess that's one of the things I, I like to, I, I, that's, that I'm thinking about is how can we take this but also recognize the, um, the limitations that it has and be, to, to still remember how important these types of conversations are mm -hmm. uh, that people have to, to and you know, we I talk about that with staff all the time is there are times when we're having a professional development meeting or a meeting with, with staff where, I, uh, where we have to say, okay, we need to put the screens down. Um, and I'm and I'm hopeful that we that uh, we'll, we'll, we will as a as a that's kind of strong, but uh, as a society is what I wanted to say. But as a as a community to be able to um, still be able to have these face to face conversations. So that's I guess I'm not sure if if it's on. Like, um, there's a variety of things that would have me on my wish list, but I guess one of the things I'm thinking about moving forward is how we address this kind of social emotional piece around technology uh, and ensure that we responsibly use it. Uh, I continue to want to add clubs. You know, just this past year, uh, we had some some um, new club initiatives that that came to us that um, that I that I want to add. And we, you know, our, our teachers uh, usually get a stipend, so I'll always want to to be able to offer those things um, to be able to to fund uh, our clubs. Um, you know, we're looking to the high school has had a really successful um, program, their Be Free initiative mm -hmm. uh, that's been at the high school for years. We're looking to um, start something like Be Free um, at the middle school level, a way that we can, um, not just from two to three, which I think we have a, a really strong connection with our students after school, whether it be coming for after school help or doing a club, but I want to look for ways that evening events or weekend events that we can also uh, reach our middle school, our middle school students and, and con con continuously engage them in that. Um, it was well, very good focus on the social media. I mean, that's so important because, like you say, there's a lot of positive ways to use it. Communicate with students and parents and teachers and community. You know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, right, right. whatever. But 
Yeah, a, an opportunity to be misused in so many ways and having the judgment as to how to use that for young people right. is a challenge because it's a challenge for adults. There are a lot of adults Absolutely. that <laughs> you yes. know mis, misuse social media and uh, so it's a good to have the focus on your programs and everything. That's, I think you're right on target with mm. those things. Thank you. Yeah. We're almost out of time. Is there uh, any last minute thoughts about the school or you have a wonderful staff and the students have a lot of energy so. Yeah, no, it's, it's been a, a remarkable um, time to be at Hopkinton Middle School. I really feel fortunate to be connected to this community, our, our teachers. I, you know, before I took the principal job, I, knew, I believed that we had really good teachers in the school, and, and I really got to know that having been principal. I feel fortunate to have landed w where I landed. I mean, just, you know, this, this year we were able to open the courtyard, which, well, you yes, know. Of course, the wonderful new courtyard. Right, yeah. so six years ago, I think, um, you know, we started uh, looking at the courtyard as, as a possibility, and, and even though it was a long time, certainly Ms. Mary Ellen Grady wanted to have that done in, in 30 days. Um, mm -hmm. I knew it was gonna be a long haul, and, and we stuck with it, and, um, you know, she really, um, push that forward and so tremendous community support of that and it's really exciting. I look forward to, we were able to be out there in the fall but I'm really excited about being out there in the summer, teachers taking their students out there and learning and so it's, it's I, I feel fortunate and I feel blessed and I appreciate the opportunity to share some of that today, Mary. Well, I'm just very glad that you could be here and tell us about everything that's going on at the Hopkinton Middle School. Absolutely. If you'd like to hear more information about the Hopkinton Middle School, visit their website located on the screen below. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Mary Arnott, and thank you for watching this episode of All About Hopkinton.